What's up? This is uh, Pang from LabVIEW by Example. Thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do stuff over and over and over and over again in LabVIEW. One way is with a for loop structure. So a for loop is a control flow statement that's common across most all programming languages. It specifies iteration, which allows code to be executed repeatedly. So usually you know how many times you'll run the code inside a for loop based on an initial condition and then a final condition. Um, here's a diagram that kind of shows you how the program flow works. You start from the beginning, loop uh, a known number of times, then pop out. Uh, and notice that the number of loops stay the same each time this is run. So before uh, diving into LabVIEW, let's see how a text-based language does this. So I've got a C Sharp form project up. Uh, on the form, I placed down a label here. Uh, so let's take a look at the code for this form. Um, to make things simple, I'll work inside the constructor, with it, which is the method that, run, that runs automatically when the application launches. For this example, I'm going to create a simple counter that increments a number. Um, I created a private uh, method that will contain a for loop. Um, so to create a for loop, I'll create an integer i in the for loop started from zero stop the for loop uh, right before it hits 10 and increment by one each on every iteration with the i plus plus operator um, so i'll write to the label with the value of i each time And here I'm going to use the delay uh, method so that um, uh, it'll update to the screen. So if I use the sleep method, um, uh, the, the text won't uh, update uh, because uh, this thread will go to sleep. So the way I do that is the following. So let's delay every half a second, which is 500 milliseconds. Okay. And so since I'm using the await keyword here, I can use async for this method here. So let's go ahead and call this. Save and run. Okay, so running this, printing out the number zero through nine every half second. Notice in this code, um, I could have specified a different starting value for i, and instead of incrementing uh, by one each time with this i plus plus, I could have told it to uh, jump uh, or increment uh, with a different value. Um, so just keep this in mind because LabVIEW um, loop looping doesn't really support this, uh, so which is kind of too bad. Okay, so now to LabVIEW. So I have a new VI up. Um, so to create a for loop, you, what you want to do is right click on the palette to get get the functions palette, get the for loop. And now your, your cursor has this for loop icon on there and you just left click and you have a uh, for loop. So this N in the top left uh, corner is called the um, loop count terminal. It tells LabVIEW how many times to run the stuff inside this sub diagram. So I'm going to wire a constant of 10 to this. Okay. The, this, this little I here is the iteration count. Um, it tells you uh, on every iteration uh, where you're at. Um, so the I you can only uh, read from. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a numeric indicator on the front panel. Okay. And I'm going to wire um, this iteration value to this numeric indicator here. So notice how there's a red dot um, there on the numeric indicator. This is called a corrosion dot, which means that since the wire is one data type, which is a signed long integer, I32, 
and the uh, indicator is a double position data type. Uh, uh, LabVIEW is trying to convert uh, this integer uh, to double for you. So uh, another way you can uh, notice this is this wire is blue and this wire is orange. So orange is double and blue is for integers. So in this case, the coercion is kind of okay um, because going from in, uh, integer to double, you don't lose any information and LabVIEW can handle that. But to make things clean, um, let's go ahead and change this to a integer. So right click on the terminal, you can change that to I32. And now the coercion dot is uh, not there anymore. So I'll go over coercion dots um, in another video. So to allow us to see the uh, value being updated, um, if you didn't have a uh, weight in here, this would run as fast as possible and you, would, you, would, you wouldn't see the values um, changing. Um, so let's go ahead and add a weight. And let's do 500 milliseconds like we did last time. And let's run. Okay, looks good. All right, so what if we um, want to go from um, 10 to 19? So in C sharp, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, I, all I do is uh, change this I to a 10 and then change this to a 20 and hit run. that counted from 10 to 19. So in LabVIEW, it's a little uh, trickier. Um, changing, um, well, the thing is that I starts at zero no matter what. So changing this 10 to 20 won't work because that'll make the loop execute 20 times and that's not really what we wanna do. So in LabVIEW, the workaround is um, setting the uh, a starting value with another variable and then using the index uh, with that variable to get the values that you want. So here I'll create a numeric constant of 10 and then wire that in here. Oops. Okay. And I get an input tunnel there. And let's go ahead and add that to here. Okay, now if I run this guy, I don't want to save this. Okay. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you today is the ability to stop the for loop before you hit the, uh, the count value. Uh, which is 10 iterations. Um, so this is useful uh, for situations where you absolutely positively have to stop everything um, in case of a failure or, or an emergency. So I'll, I'll simulate this with a stop button. So let's go ahead and put a stop button on the front panel. So you can right click Boolean stop button here. Okay, so I have a stop button already. So the, to show the conditional stop on a for loop, you have to right click and say conditional terminal. When you do that, a new terminal appears and which uh, if wired with a true value will stop this uh, for loop. And if it's false, it'll, it'll just keep running. So let's go ahead and wire this in and let's run. It's going, going, going. Make that stop, stop before I hit uh, 19, okay? So one subtle thing about this is um, this question. Um, when, when doing something like this, make sure that the button is inside the loop. Why is that? Give up. So putting the terminal inside ensures that the button value is checked every time we go around this loop. Uh, if the terminal was outside and wired in through an input tunnel, um, the Y would only contain the value of the button when we first hit the uh, LabVIEW start button or run button. 
which is probably going to be false. So let me let me demonstrate that. So if I move this outside of this loop here, um, so in uh, LabVIEW 2017, the wire actually stays when you move it outside of the loop. Um, so you may not do this whenever you're working with another version of LabVIEW, so you may have to re rewire. Um, so whenever I run this guy, um, on every iteration, it's going to just read um, the value when I hit the uh, uh, run. Uh, so right now it's false, so if I hit run now, no matter what I do on this button, LabVIEW's not reading it on every iteration. Um, let me show you that again. So I run, no matter what. Okay. So I can emulate, um, or I can make this loop only run once. If I hit this to start, remember that you can change the values at edit time, and then hit the run button. I'll just run one time and then stop. You can see this. Uh, go back to a white arrow. It's not showing that it's running. So it only ran this one time. It saw this as true. This this tunnel said it was true, and we stopped. Cool. All right. Uh, congrats. Now you know a little bit more uh, about LabVIEW and for loops. Um, so I'll dig deeper deeper into uh, for loops in my next video. But I think this is a great time to close shop for today. Please add your comments and likes below or just go to labviewbyexample.com for more tips, tricks, and videos about the world of LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Later, guys.